my name is Gary Carr and I'm Creative Director here at LionNet. My name is Gary Carr. <laughs> My name is Gary Carr. I'm creative director at Lionhead. After the first three adventures that we've been on, um, how does the journey relate to the stories in those? So, Fable: The Journey takes place about 50 years after Fable Three. Um, it's a different Fable because it doesn't use the bloodline from what the previous Fable games. You're not destined to be a hero in Fable the Journey, you play Gabriel, who's just an everyman, he's just a, a young kid who's part of a, a travelling dweller tribe, so it's different, it's meant to be different, this is very much a, a departure from the conventional Fable game, it's something I consider to be a, a sister title but takes place in the Fable universe. How hard was it to translate the RPG elements um, of Albion to connect <coughs> and why did you decide to use the Unreal Engine rather than creating a whole new engine, um, and also was it a challenge to create a sit-down Kinect mm. game rather than standing up, which is what everyone seems to do at the moment? So you give me three questions yeah. there, I'll take them in, I'll take them in, <laughs> in order. So um, we don't see this as a conventional RPG fable, so there are, there are RPG elements, there's levelling up, there's collectibles, there's some choice. But really, um, if we did a conventional RPG, I think I'd want my controller back. So this is much more an action-adventure game, uh, and it, it, it certainly isn't trying to be a, an RPG. But we still have the humour, we still have the rich, beautiful world. Um, talking of the world uh, and the beauty, I think it's the best-looking fable we've made. Um, not because uh, our artists suddenly have got better and our animators have got better, but normally we write our own technology. And if you make a game over a two year life cycle, sometimes our poor artists and animators and our level designers don't get to actually see their work till, I don't know, a year and a half into the game development because we're still building technology. So using Unreal has allowed us to, day one, start building things and seeing what they look like in the game and iterating on that. So it really has helped our team build a, a more beautiful game. And the final point, I think, uh, if we're going to ask people to play a long play connect game, I think it's critical that um, we allow them to sit down. No one wants to play a fable game for 15 hours straight standing up. So we've, we, we developed some technology along with um, the platform team at, at Microsoft uh, called Seat to Play, which uses a completely different tracking system which allows people to sit on the couch and play this game. Okay, so I played the first three games religiously. Mm -hmm. I played them time and time again. Um, and it feels quite natural to step back into Albion mm -hmm. with this. Um, but if you didn't know anything about the series, mm. how um, approachable is this game uh, in terms of the lore and the characters? And things That's like a really that? good question. One of the things we wanted to do was definitely do something with the game that, if you've been a Fable fan and you've travelled with us over the last 10 years, that you felt belonged to the series. I think if, we had, if we'd have uh, ignored our fans, they would have thought, wow, this is just you're just putting a brand of Fable on top of it. So it was important to bring some storylines along which people would go, ah, that makes sense. Now I know a little bit more about what I came across in, say, Fable 2. Um, but for someone who's new to Fable, uh, I don't think this game uh, is a problem because I think a lot of those storylines still work. They've just been told for the first time. So I think if you're a Fable fan, you'll like the nod to previous Fables. If you've never played a Fable before, I don't think it inhibits the experience. Um, so, can we talk about Teresa? Yes. Um, she's obviously a reoccurring character, mm -hmm. she's in all the other ones. Um, how does she come across in this one? Because she starts off in the first one as quite um, a nice person, she's the sister of the mm. hero. Mm. Um, but then she starts becoming more selfish and mm. she takes over the spire. So, what is her role in this one? Well, that's great because we answer that question in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll find out about that story later on why you know why she did that. Uh, well, I think the important thing was um, firstly, if I'm honest, I felt Teresa in Fable Three wasn't uh, the best use of Teresa. She suddenly felt she was becoming this narrator rather than a character. 
And I think we put more and more um, flexibility into the Fable games, more, more options for you to change the way you play and how you play, that it was difficult for Teresa to react to the way the player played. So she, I think, if you, you, I mean, you've played Fable 1, that's quite a linear game. It wasn't as uh, broad as Fable yeah. 3. So the difficulty is when you start to branch out in gameplay, it's very difficult for uh, important characters to react to the way you play the game. So because we intentionally made this a lot more of a linear experience, a bit like Fable 1, uh, we put some more richness back into her character. So even though it's quite nice she was this aloof character, and that was pretty much the reason we could keep her in every, ep every single episode so far, we did want to revisit her and, and, and put some more um, flesh on her bones and just make her a stronger character. So we explain, she still has that aloof personality, and that's part of the humour that we play off against Gabriel, who's just a kid who's a bit of a smart mouth. But we play off those two different uh, characters quite nicely in Fable of the Journey. But we do explain more about Teresa and why she did what she did in Fable 2 and, and a little bit more about why she's 500 years old and what, what her purpose is in Albion. Has Zoe Wanamaker mm. come back to be Teresa? Have you brought anyone else, uh, character-wise or voice actors, from the other games? Okay, we've brought back some people who were characters in the previous Fable games but not lead characters. We. We've used a lot of big names. Fable 3 had a huge cast of characters, John Cleese, Simon Pegg, Bernard Hill, Zoe Wanamaker. Um, but what we wanted to do was just base this on uh, uh, the development between you, the hero, being you playing the game, and Theresa, the character. So the only person we've really brought back who was an A-list, if you like, from the previous Fable games was Zoe. So Zoe's the one that's been on all of them. But she enjoyed having a, a, a reasonably good script this time, you know, Quite often it's, it's been a thin script and very little depth of performance, but she gets to sort of use her A-list acting talent this time around. Okay, so after the journey, yes, is there scope for anything else in Albion, going back to RPG, or are we going to maybe see more of the connects <clears throat> standing up maybe? No, uh, so uh, as, as designers we don't, think about what our input device is going to be. We don't decide we want to go, but we're Team Connect or we're Team Controller. It's not, it's not the way we think. We had an idea to do a Connect game in, in Albion because we wanted you to feel like a hero. So we've done that, and I think that's been a great, um, a great thing for us to do. doesn't mean to say that we see our future in Connect or not in Connect. We, we'll, we'll judge every concept for the right user interface. And that's, that's the way we think as designers. We don't design for the interface. If we have an idea that suits an interface like Connect, we'll use it. Uh, but I don't think I, I'd want to stand up and play. Uh, to be honest, I quite like sitting down, I'm quite lazy. <laughs>